lost track, I think, fourth or fifth event of our great big green week. Um, and today is our Eco Schools and Food for Life uh, celebration event. So as I'm sure lots of you know, normally our Food for Life celebration events um, usually happen at City Hall and we get lots of schools coming along and presenting. Um, unfortunately, this year is very similar to last year's where we're having to do this as a virtual event. Um, but certainly in June next year, we'll be doing this certainly face to face um, and hopefully get to see lots of students and uh, find out about lots of projects that have been going on in Leicester. Um, so I'd like to introduce myself first of all. Uh, my name is Lee Jowett. I am the Environmental Education Coordinator here at Leicester City Council um, and I manage a team that work with schools all over Leicester on becoming more sustainable. So that's from things like doing assemblies and workshops right through to supporting schools with things like solar panels um, and building school gardens and school grounds. Um, I'm going to just introduce my colleague today who's also on the call. Um, if I can hand over to you, Amy. Yeah, good morning everyone. I'm Amy Peace and I'm a project officer in the environmental education team uh, and Lee, Lee is my boss uh, and I've been working on various projects with schools including probably the one that most of you would be involved in is the Grow Your Own Grub Meal Barrow and Pumpkin Growing Competitions. Brilliant, thank you very much. And our partner in crime today is uh, Lisa Didier from Food for Life. So I'm, I'm just going to briefly let Lisa just introduce herself and then we'll come back to Food for Life in a little bit. But Lisa, if you'd like to just briefly introduce yourself. Yes, to me. Can you hear me now? We can, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Lisa Didier and I am the programme manager for Leicester Food for Life. We work with um, over 80 schools, working with improving the food culture in schools and healthy eating. Real. Thank you very much, Lisa. And this morning, I'm very pleased to welcome a couple of speakers who are going to be um, telling us a little bit about kind of our commitments in Leicester and also our Food for Life work and our Eco Schools work. Um, so I guess without further ado, I'd like to hand over to our first uh, welcome speaker today, who is Councillor Adam Clark. Uh, Councillor Clark is the Deputy City Mayor for Environment and Transportation. Um, if I can hand over to you, Adam, if that's OK. May or may not have frozen. I think we might have lost Adam. We'll come back to Adam shortly if that's okay. Um, Lisa, can we hand back to you? Um, and if you'd like to start off with uh, your area for Food for Life, if that's okay. Well, I think you're on mute as well. Mm, right, I'm here. Um, yeah, I, I think. Really, it's about having a, a, a big thank you to schools for this past year as well, because, you know, they've continued to work with children and, and families, keeping children fed through the pandemic and, and caterers have had, you know, very difficult jobs um, and they've carried on and it's and, and school foods kept going and, and, and that really needs to be applauded. I didn't want to dwell too much on on COVID, and I know there was very, very diff many difficulties around that. So we'll just leave it there. But in actual fact, there were some good things that happened. So I think it led, you know, the recent events led to a real appreciation of good food, and then, you know, we've seen an, an increase in food growing at home and food growing in schools. I know that people were cooking and even though it was maybe banana bread being the most Googled recipe, that's fine. That's still cooking and it's still using fresh ingredients. So that's all positive. You know, there was an increase in the use of food banks and, and my colleague Michaela will be talking about a little bit about that and how that links with schools later. Um, but also this year, there was the publication of the National Food Strategy and that's quite important because that's um, convincing government to actually do something around around food. And also, you know, it, it, it's looking at that link between the ha having a healthy diet and linking that with sus having a sustainable diet. If you have a healthy diet, it's a sustainable diet anyway. So that's good for the environment as well. As part of that, you know, the 
National food strategy is also looking at that reducing um, highly processed food, reducing our dependency on um, junk food as well, trying to get, get away from that and trying to get into sort of really cooking or knowing where your food comes from. And that's what our schools are doing really well on, um, you know, supported by Food for Life as well. Also this year was the um, less, launch of the Leicester City Food Plan. And that echoes a lot of things that is in the national strategy as well. And we're really trying to put it down to that local level. And really what the food plan would like to do is, is um, really change Leicester into being, you know, having a healthy food culture and looking at health education as well. And that's um, supported by through the Leicester City Public Health and they've funded us and um, Councillor Dempster is the head of health for Leicester City and, and they're really supportive of, of us and the work that we're doing. So with Food for Life, it's given you, um, given you sort of a framework to follow that, that helps to improve health and well-being of, of children and we've got some examples coming up of what schools have been doing and, and, and the awards they've received. And this year, we really want to, you know, look at that take up of, of free school meals and, and universal infant free school meals and really improving that offer in, in, in schools. And that's something that, 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 you know, the children, it's not just up to people making the decisions, it's up to the children as well to have their voice in that. Um, so I will introduce you either Michaela's coming next or Councillor Aaron Clark will be next. Michaela. Yeah, we'll go to and, Michaela, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I'll introduce Michaela, who who is working on the Family Cook and Eat project in the city. Um, she's very experienced with um, cooking teacher, and she works with all the celebrity chefs on the BBC Saturday Morning Kitchen, which she's going to talk about. Um, and she she doesn't appear on TV, or not that I've ever seen her, but you know her cooking does and what she makes does and. She's a star in our eyes, though, as well. Good morning. How do I, what do I do from that speech? I mean, there's pressure there, isn't there? Good morning, everybody. Um, well, thank you for asking me to talk today on your amazing celebration that you've got today, which I'm really proud of the whole team and partnerships um, and what you've achieved. So that's brilliant. Um, but like Lisa said, my name's Michaela, <clears throat> Michaela Bowles. And I'm the cooking eat manager for Food for Life. Uh, and I'm also, like Lisa mentioned, a home economist. That's what we call ourselves in the TV world. Um, and I currently work on BBC One Saturday Kitchen with Matt Tebbert. And I've done that role for about 20 years, so a very long time. Um, and basically what it means is I just cook the food for the show and then the chefs take the credits. And that's what happens. So, get, you know, it says, how amazing is your food? When actually, really, it's Michaela's food that's amazing. But anyway. So that's what I do on TV, but I wanted to talk about that a little bit because I did want to explain that both roles that I work in, both TV and cooking in schools and teaching cooking skills, really marries really well together. And there's two chefs in particular that I work with who embody this whole sustainable food. Um, and one of them is Sat Baines, who's based in Nottingham, and he has his own kitchen garden. He's got chickens and rabbits. And another one I wanted to mention was Bryn Williams, and he's based in London and Wales, and he actually bought his own farm in order for them to grow their own produce to, to actually um, feed the restaurants that he owns. So I really do live this in both worlds um, and it's really important to me. But what it does, it gives me a wealth of food knowledge and nutrition knowledge as well. And I get to learn from the best chefs in the world um, every week, so I'm very blessed. Um, I've worked in school food for 20 years um, and I've seen the positive impact cooking has on schools and as an extracurricular activity as well. So not just within the cooking and within the curriculum, but also like what Lisa mentioned, cooking eat sessions um, that happen either in school or outside school. Um, and the benefit that the families and the community around them has is, is, is undeniable um, what that brings. Because it's not only a vital life skill, but it also teaches valuable cooking skills and nutrition. But that also can be taught through most subjects. So it's a brilliant cross-curricular subject. 
So once we've gone into schools and we've told this, you know, the schools that um, have been trained, they really do follow through and they really do cooking with their children. Marrying beautifully with eco schools, I must say, on everything that we do, like we support each other's messages constantly. Um, one of the research, well, the, re the resources that I developed for Cook and Eat, actually on the resources themselves do have sections called reducing waste. They have sections called using leftovers. It has a section about growing, whether it's on a windowsill or in a garden. And this all came from ethnographic research that was done on a project, which I'll just mention a bit further on uh, what I've been involved in. Climate, nature and health, high priorities for all of us moving forward. And that's why I think the partnership works so well um, with us, um, with us both. And cooking and eating, whether it's in school or whether it's in a, a cook and eat session within the community, it does break down barriers, it combats fussy eating, it introduces new food and flavours, reduces salt, fat and sugar intake, reduces meat consumption, increases capacity of fruit and vegetables, and it gives confidence, and we know it gives them confidence because they cook from scratch um, and even use unfamiliar recipes sometimes that they feel confident enough to cook. Now, in the last 18 months, um, within Leicester City, I've been working on a project, a cook and eat project based in the city, um, working out the ways, the best way to engage, plan and deliver cook and eat because cook and eat sessions do happen, but they're not generally sustainable and it doesn't really last. So figuring out a way of how we can sustain that project and how we can get more benefits from it. And how I did that during COVID, um, because with pre-COVID I was delivering face to face and then during COVID what I did was I connected to the local food banks, I did a map of Leicester City's food banks, connected all of our primary schools to their local food banks and whoever was delivering cook and eat face to face beforehand, we brought in a new model which was a cook and eat bag model. How that worked was the local food bank provided either the fresh or the grocery, the school provided the alternative, what they weren't providing, and we would start to grow a store cupboard for that family. This is one of the things, big feedbacks that we got from when we were doing our research was these families, a lot of families don't have a store cupboard that they can lend to. Um, so that's what we were doing and it worked beautifully. We had families engaging in, in cooking from scratch, cooking together, um, realizing what the jobs for the adults, what the jobs for the children. They made the recipes again. They tasted new food um, and came back for more and wanted more and more recipes, which is always, always a good sign. Um, they navigated their way through all the issues. So like the allergies, the fussy eating, um, through using the resources that I developed. So on there, we had seasonality of fruit and vegetables, so they could adapt that according to their taste or seasons, which obviously we know undoubtedly reduces cost. And their confidence grow, uh, grew every week in, in what they wanted to do, and then they wanted to learn new skills. Um, we all know the amount of evidence there is out there um, stating that, you know, how knowing how to cook from scratch and how that benefits families and communities obviously backed up by what Lisa was mentioning before about government strategy and how that backs it up as well. But what I'd like to end with is a challenge for Leicester City, um, supported by myself, hopefully, if I have time, I'm very busy lady, but I'd love to, is to really think about maybe a policy, I mean, I don't know what you want to call it, policy, strategy, procedure, idea, that we could maybe, we could train as many people within the community and school, so teachers, TAs, volunteers, community leaders, maybe early health intervention teams, and we can train everybody to deliver cooking skills because that would benefit the city massively. And then I'm not sure how many of you know much about teacher training, initial teacher training, but in primary school teacher training, there's not a lot of practical cooking skills that are taught, it's mainly theory. So we've got a lot of teachers coming out um, of their PGCE without the skills to teach it practically. So maybe we could do, maybe we could speak to Leicester University, see if we get a little module in there somehow, practical learning, you know, maybe do it with eco schools as well. So they all get all that information as well. But I think that would be a good challenge that we could maybe make sure that we could train as many people across the city as we can. And, Believe me, I'm already starting to do it because I have a um, teacher training session this afternoon in Inglehurst Junior School, where I'll be teaching 14 teachers in how to deliver cooking skills um, within their communities and schools. So 
we're already starting back and face to face is starting to start again which I'm really happy about so yeah so that is me and that is what I've been doing for the last couple of years does anybody have any questions that's brilliant thank you Michaela some really interesting ideas and actually maybe we should get in touch because I do quite a bit of work with University of Leicester students um, so I think definitely there's a conversation there with uh, a couple of us there so that's brilliant thank you very much um, we're going to move on Lisa if that's okay I'm going to give you a little bit of time to tell us a bit about some of our Food for Life awards that were achieved last year yes said. um so again it was there was a, a lot of schools have actually um they've been doing a lot of work um but i wanted to highlight sort of, sort of four schools so rushy mead primary have achieved their bronze award and charmwood and stokeswood I'll, I'll come back to them as well they've achieved their silver award and we just need to mention um, Overdale Juniors who have been carrying on, they're our gold school in the city, and they've also been carrying on their, their work and um, their good work, and we'll talk about that later. So with Rushy Mead Primary and their bronze, I just want to highlight some of the things that they, they've been working on. I think as a school, you know, they've really grasped that notion of, of, of the health and well-being of their children and really wanting to improve the health of, of uh, them. And then, uh, as you can see here, one of the things they, they had um, done is converted that really sort of unloved little area of, of ground there. And the middle one is shows you the construction and the final one does show you what, what happened. And the children were growing salads and all sorts of, of um, uh, beans, strawberries, from what I can remember. I think it was a couple of courgettes. And that was a real community effort. They're, they're doing help from the Allotment Society, from parents, from wider community. And it was a real joint effort to get that, that area up and, up and running. It was It's just brilliant to see that transformation in real life. I mean, the, the pictures look great, but, you know, in real life, you could see that transformation. And, and it, it was quite amazing. And that led on to sort of cooking as well. And what they were making, they were they were cooking with, and some of the things we we've encouraged, which has been more difficult in lockdown, is is for some of the produce to be even used in the school meals as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know how you know that hasn't really happened. So I'm hoping that we can get to that point with all your the lovely growing areas in 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 school. And then um, you know we've got to mention Karen Karen Sheeran. Um, and she did comment that the children had benefited a great deal from all of that and that, um, you know, there were, some of the produce was taken home and cooked with, with the families as well. So and then we've got Charmwood Primary and I don't have any pictures of Charmwood, but um, they've got their silver award and they've really they're really supported by the head teacher and the senior leadership team and in and, and the school and led by um, Kieran Canabar now, she just got married and uh, you know she, they, they really have worked on healthy lunch boxes um, and this, they did see an improvement over a period of months, a maintained improvement in the lunch boxes, so that was really positive and the school really have, have grasped cooking on the curriculum and all of the pupils are cooking um, in lockdown. They made sure that the, the cooking, they had enough equipment. They applied for a grant so that children could cook in the bubble still because um, there was an issue about sharing equipment. So they really embraced uh, cooking and the um, enthusiasm was carried on during lockdown for their for their cooking and um, each week they uploaded recipes um, to their school website and encouraged families to cook at home and they took photographs as well so you know they've really kept that going so not only did they, they achieve their their silver they really um you know, they've really helped their, their school and their community during, during lockdown as well. So then Stokeswood Primary also received their silver. And, you know, 
over over a couple of years, they've really they have changed their food culture in school. They've had improvements in the dining hall, in the meals. They've invited parents in and other people from the community to eat. Teachers are encouraged to eat with their pupils at lunchtime. And they've seen a, a, a marked improvement in their uptake as well. Um, they've also, um, during lockdown, they did work on, um, oh yeah, that's the cookie, that's the fish cakes that they've, be, that they've made. Um, they've loved cooking in, in, in school as well. Um, they did a really good uh, project on food waste in the dining hall as well. And they reduced their uh, waste by one of the main things that they implemented was around portions and really having a look at portion control and what was being being served. Um, you know, they've really, really constantly trying to improve that, 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 that school meals as well as improving on their, their cooking and their growing as well. They're really good at food growing in their school and integrating it into lessons. And, um, They've worked with the nearby allotments for their growing as well. And I know um, this was a before lockdown that they had, uh, they were on news round with their pumpkin uh, bashing and then recycling of their, their pumpkins in October. And we're all coming up to pumpkin time now, aren't we? So that was good. Um, they um, have worked with Michaela. They're one of the schools that worked with Michaela over there with their families. And they've saw, they've saw really good um relationship building up between you know the food bank and the school and currently they're uh, participating in a pilot around food and mood that's um from food for life and we're looking at resources and around that um sort of aspect linking food with with mental health um which is something that we will be um looking at and evaluating and sharing with all of you. So that that's be another useful project. Um, and just lastly, just to mention the work that Overdale have been doing, we will be hopefully in, if, if COVID allows us and lockdowns and all the rest of it in the future, hopefully we'll be having um, a network meeting there to see that they're about their good work. But also Karen um, Cooper, who's the Food for Life lead there has uh, asked if any schools would like to come and visit and see the work they've done they're most welcome again if we're all, all allowed to do that um they've really again embraced cooking on the curriculum so that all students have a chance to cook um that's increased and i think what's going to be interesting is they've always had a healthy healthy tuck shop but what they're moving to now is um, a healthy tuck shop run by the students as like a social enterprise, but they're linking with a local provider for their fruit and vegetables. And the students are going to um, use that sort of um, have stalls, I should say, on the on the um, playground so that they can buy, you know, for a reduced price, um, healthy snacks. So that's going to be really interesting and, and, and one to watch and really good that they're leaking, le linking up with their local um, uh, providers and, and somebody in their area. So that's really good. But so lastly, just a big, big well done to all the schools out there who have worked throughout lockdown, helping to feed our children. And not just that, just not just feeding, but improving the health as well of um, pupils it's really you know you deserve around all the schools who've been working like that deserve a um a round of applause and a, and a pat on the back for keeping that going oh, little hands don't they? yeah well done excellent thank you lisa some really really interesting things happening we should like um we're going to move on to our eco school awards now which is our second part of this morning's uh, activities um, and really pleased to sort of mention just a number of our green flag eco schools this year. Um, so as I'm sure everyone knows, um, most schools go for their green flag every two years. Um, that's actually changing this year. So all schools from this year will need to renew every year. Um, slightly simpler process. Um, but in the last 12 months, we know it's been really challenging for schools. Um, but we're really pleased that nearly 20 schools applied for their first or their renewal green flag. 
um, which is absolutely a fantastic achievement, given that often schools are maybe not open all the time, um, remote learning and unable to sort of mix year groups and bubbles. Um, so really, really pleased we've got over 50 green flags in Leicester now, which means that we are number one in England. Um, I think that's the third year running that that's happened. So fantastic. Um, and now all that effort comes back to our schools and our pupils and staff that work so hard on this. So I'm going to hand over to Amy, who's going to announce our first, second and third green flags from the last academic year. So Amy, I'll hand over to you. Brilliant. Thank you, Lee. Um, yeah, so those schools that have achieved their first Eco Schools green flag this year are Moat Community College, St Paul's Catholic School, Caldercut Primary School, Merrydale Junior School, Granby, oh, I've forgotten how to speak, Granbury, Granby Primary School, uh, Land of Learning Nursery and Primary School, and Momaker Hill Primary School. Um, for their second eco flag, uh, we've got Shafts Shaftesbury Junior School, Wyvern Primary School, Glebelands Primary School, Overdale Junior School, and Overdale Infant School, Charmwood Primary School, Whitehall Primary School, Mellor Primary School. Holy Cross Primary School and Saw Valley Primary School. And achieving their third green flag this year uh, is Bridge Junior School. And we've got some pictures there from our last um, Eco Schools celebration that we had at City Hall in 2019, I want to say, Lee. That's I think that sounds right. A little bit of relief and nodding. Um, yeah, it's also worth mentioning a couple of our uh, Leicester big hitters who are on their fourth um, eco flag, green eco flags already, and that's Avenue Primary School and Mayflower Primary School as well, just as a, a special mention there. Um, and I'd also just like to echo Lee and say congratulations to everyone. We know that it's been a really, really challenging year, but when we get to hear the stories that come out of your schools about what you're doing, it makes our job very very nice to do and see what you're all getting up to. Absolutely thank you very much Amy. Um, so we're going to move on um, and invite in a second one of our green flag schools who got their green flag uh, two years ago so they're going to be renewing this year so that's why they're not on our list that we've just announced today um, but I'm really really pleased to welcome Abby Mead Primary Academy today who are going to tell us a little bit about their edible playground journey um, which links really nicely to Food for Life and the Eco Schools programme. Um, and they're going to tell us a little bit about what they've been doing, how they've got involved with lots of food growing and eco activities. Um, so I'm going to hand over, if that's OK, to Mrs Ikram, um, however you want to present, if that's OK. Thank you, Lee. We've got children from Abbey Mead uh, who would like to talk about what we've been doing in our edible playgrounds. Fantastic. So just give me a shout when you'd like to move on to each slide and it's up to you. Next slide, please. By instilling healthy eating at an early age, edible playgrounds help tackle obesity, food poverty and lack of access to nature. Majority of our pupils come from homes with no gardens, so the edible playgrounds have helped support them. Next slide, please. People from organic gardens came to build our edible playgrounds for us. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. We have been planting strawberries, sweet peas, broad beans, radishes, pumpkins, garlics, and lots more. Next slide. Next slide, please. We have been harvesting fruit and vegetables, for example, garlic, leeks, pumpkins, peaches, lettuces, potatoes, carrots, strawberries, and more. We have been we have been cooking using um, garlic and lettuce to make sandwiches and garlic bread. You want to have, you want to have harvested garlic and they have made delicious garlic bread too. 
We went back into our classes and wrote instructions how to make it. Next slide, please. And this were our year one children. Not only did they harvest garlic from our edible playgrounds, but they also went back and made garlic bread and then went the next day, went into their classrooms and wrote uh, about instructions about how they made their garlic bread. So it helped with uh, their oracy and their literacy as well. And this was how we had differentiated activities with the low ability children wrote simple sentences and uh, middle abilities used verbs in their writings. Next slide, please. And the high ability used not only verbs but also conjunctions. Next slide, please. Our Eco Club has helped develop social skills of the children we work with. AS, a child in year one who has autism, had the opportunity to interact with a wider range of unfamiliar children when participating in different activities like planting and litter picking outdoors. He also enjoyed making and eating the sandwiches with the group. Uh, this child who joined our Eco Club used to struggle with the different textures of the food. So trying the lettuce and lettuce sandwiches, he's now started uh, enjoying eating lettuce at home. So the Eco Club, uh, I helped parents who so worked in partnership with them and gave them some lettuce seeds. Uh, the lady Julia from uh, Edible Gardens, organic school, uh, organic gardens, helped me with some lettuce seeds and we gave them to mom and now he's growing his own lettuce at home, which he's enjoying eating. Next slide, please. People from organic gardens also came and helped improve the forest area in our school. And now we have a dead area and a musical and a musical instrument for children to hear. Thank you very much to me. Thank you very much, and thank you very much, everyone, at Abbey Me Primary. I think I can find my applause button. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. So now is a chance if there's anyone on the call today who would like to ask any questions. And I'm just wondering if I could ask a question, maybe, Mrs. Ikram, if you want to pick a couple of pupils. What has been your favourite thing about doing the edible playgrounds? What's the bit you've enjoyed the most? Um, wait, the I've enjoyed watering for the plants with my friends. We go there every lunchtime and we always water the plants and have fun going through all the plants and just looking at them and see how they've improved over the few weeks. Fantastic. And anyone else? Anyone else want to pick? Vedic? So, in Eco Club, we pick all the litter. And we just like throw it away. We put it in the bag and wait first. And after we also go some grow plants in the edible flavor. What have you loved to grow, Vedic? Carrots and anything else you can enjoy it? Pumpkins. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, Eliza, you to tell us something. What have you enjoyed doing in the edible playgrounds? I've enjoyed in the edible playgrounds to, to look at the plant, plants grow all the different plant, um, strawberries, raspberries, all the different fruits, vegetables, everything with, every, I like to see everything with life, joy, and, and love. Amazing. Thank you, Thank you very much. I think that's brilliant. I, I have to say, I, I see lots of your pictures on social media and I'm very jealous of your garden. I think my garden's nice, but I'm very jealous of yours. I need to, I'm sure Lisa and I will have to come and visit soon. And we'll come and see your garden because they do look absolutely amazing. Thank you. We're going to have you at meet. Thank you very much. Has anyone else got any questions? Lisa? I just wanted to ask the children. Um, if there was something that they'd grown and then tasted that they'd never tasted before. Is there anything that grew and you've never tasted it before? Vishani? I 
never tasted leeks. Oh, you've never tasted leeks. So would you like to taste the leeks, Rishani? Yeah. Super, we've just harvested some leeks, so we'll give that to Rishani to take home to taste. <laughs> Maybe your mommy can make you leek and potato soup. Anybody else who the other? I can taste it. Um, I've never tasted it. Um, okay, so I would like to taste it. Super. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone? No, no problem. That's great. Well, thank you very much, everyone at Abbey Mead. That's been really interesting find out about your edible playground and what you've been up to and and actually the further plans and things you want to do in the future sound absolutely brilliant so yeah really 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 great ideas I'm very jealous of your garden I have to say excellent well we're going to come back to Councillor Clark who I believe now is with us and um, if that's okay Councillor Clark um, I think your internet has finally got stable again and um, so I'd like to welcome um, Councillor Adam Clark if that's okay Th thanks, Lee. I'm um, just checking you can hear me. Yep, we can. Yep. You. Gosh, isn't it horrible <laughs> when the technology fails? But I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased that you can now hear me. Um, so yeah, m my name's Adam Adam Clark, and I, my job title is Deputy City Mayor, and that means that my boss is the mayor, and it's my job to make sure that our city is as green as possible in the quickest time possible and you know for me it's a really exciting job because it means that I, I i try and encourage people to use greener transport to walk and cycle and take the bus as much as possible i try and encourage people to use greener energy or use less energy uh, as well to heat their homes or to um or, or to power their transport too and i try to encourage people to talk about the challenges that we have in terms of the environment and particularly what we call the climate emergency and that's with us all really trying to to make sure that we that, that we reduce the impacts of climate change to as little as possible as fast as possible and that's a it's a really exciting job and it's a really big job but it's it's made a lot easier for me by people like Lee Amy Lisa and everybody on this call and I was absolutely fascinated to listen to to Michaela I was very disappointed to hear about the cheating that goes on in television I think that's absolutely disgraceful we won't have any of that in in our schools I'm, I'm sure um, but um, I'm, I was really fascinated to listen to, to Michaela because I thought um, you know what some of the things she was saying some of the ideas she's got about trying to get people to 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 cook more in schools and to learn about the the joy of cooking but also that you can learn through food and eating as well so you can learn math skills when when you're weighing things and you can learn English skills when you're talking and writing about what you're doing and to do that with cooking is a fantastic idea but also with the eco schools program as Lee said um, he, he wouldn't say it himself but he nearly did that it's the best it's the very best eco schools program in the country and we're really excited that, that that's possible and that's because of you uh, that's because of all the pupils and the staff in the schools who put so much hard work into to making our schools um, as eco-friendly as possible and that teaches the rest of us something because what I feel is that a school is in a sense like a little city um, so much goes on in a school um, that is like a little city um, like Leicester is a big city and actually I can learn from how you move around your school, how you work in your school, uh, how, you, how, how you face the challenges that you've got to face in your school, how you grow food in your schools, how you use energy in your schools, how you get to your schools. We can we can learn from that. And I think that is um, you know really important. The work you do is not only important for your school, it's important for the whole city. I also think that it's um, absolutely brilliant that, that you're um, working so hard together with each other, um, not only in school but out of school and after school and I think that's really really important too and I hope that people take what they're learning back to home as well and and, you, and parents and carers are, are learning from you too. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to say was that in November, I don't know if you know, there's a big conference um, happening in Scotland, in Glasgow, called COP26. Um, and that's where all the politicians, all the big important politicians, not like me, I'm a little unimportant politician, but all the big important politicians are getting together and trying to make sure that we we minimise the impact of climate change. We make that impact as small as possible. 
And what I heard on the radio this morning is that people are really worried that they're talking the talk, they're saying, but they have to walk the walk. Um, and it's true. Politicians do have to now do much, much more and they can learn so much from you, so much from the work that you're doing. We've done a lot of talking today, actually, haven't we? But in between times, I know that you're working really, really hard and I'm just so proud frankly of, of the work that you do i was really pleased to hear of the great work that overdale junior school do because that's my old school that's where i went but the work of um, abby mead th those photos really told a story of not only the hard work you put in but all the positive things you get from back from that hard work too so all I really wanted to say was to say, say thank you to everybody on the call. And that includes Lee and Amy and Lisa. Um, they know how highly I regard them, but, but particularly the children and the staff in the schools who do this work from day to day. You're real champions. You're champions for your school and you're champions for your city. So thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Adam. Really appreciate sort of those words um, this morning. Um, really thank you. So just to wrap up, just a couple of things, just to make you aware of things that are happening over the next few weeks, because we like to make you aware and plug some of the other things we're doing. Um, as Adam said, in the beginning of November is our the big conference that's happening up in Glasgow, and it's really important um, for all the countries to come together. So what we're going to be doing during that fortnight is our eco school roadshow. So that's for the eco teams, the school councils to come along to the secondary schools and find out all about COP26 and some of the other things that we can do as schools to support that. Um, so that'll be going out to teachers if it's not already with you. Um, and we've got eight dates happening all over Leicester City um, during that fortnight where you can come along, meet other schools um, and learn about things as well. We've also got some governor and trustee training. So absolutely brilliant all the work you're doing in school. But if you want your governors and other people to know about it, we've got some training that's happening next week um, that they can sign up to. And then the other big thing that we've launched this week, and we're going to be officially launching this tomorrow during our Climate March and Plastic Free Picnic, is our Green Hearts from Leicester. So we're asking people to make their commitments on actions around climate change. So that might be walking more to school. It might be growing more fruit and vegetables. Um, lots of different things that we could get you to think about doing. And the challenge is to ask our world leaders um, like presidents, like our prime minister, to really think about what they're doing at that meeting in November. So schools can get some of these green hearts and um, we'll be doing some of these tomorrow on our climate march. And then you can send them in to us and we're going to have a big display in the city with all of these on. So hopefully we'll have thousands of commitments and thousands of messages for our politicians. So if you're interested in that, just send us an email and we can send some of them out to you. So finally, then, I think just a really big thank you to everyone that's been listening in today, whether you're watching this live today at Teams or this is going to be on our YouTube channel shortly afterwards. Um, just a really big thank you for all the work you do, because although we take lots of the glory from what you do, the day to day stuff is what you're doing in school. So just to say a really big thank you um, for everyone. And we look forward to seeing you all really soon in school. We're very happy to come out and see activities and things, find out what you're up to. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all really soon. So thank you very much for listening and we'll see you soon. Thanks.